Welcome to Unit 6 about using multiple if statements. Sometimes the world is more complex. You do not have just two options, yes or no, true or false, but you have several conditions and you must check multiple conditions consecutively. For example, in here we have, it is raining tomorrow, I will clean the bathroom. That's condition one. Otherwise, I will go shopping, but only if I get the money back, which is um, condition two. In uh, Python, you can do not only this if and else statements, but you can squeeze in other conditions with elif, else if, but uh, short elif. You can see a little text, um, a little code uh, down here. We have the temperature and we have this if temperature is bigger than 30, uh, elif temperature is bigger than 20, else something is cold. We'll discuss it later in more detail. Another th option to make things more complicated is to nest if statements. So to check if one condition is true, and if it is true, check another condition, and maybe even a third condition. So it's not really the same as this ALIF, where you have several options, which you can check one after another, but it's within um, these, these conditions are nested. And you can see it in the code down here that uh, these ifs are indented and even more indented, so they are nested in each other. Again, it's showtime. Let's have a look on the real code open up your notebooks and we continue there. Um, so far we have at our um, if statements and just focus, focused on if condition one statement and then else statement. However, we can bring in more conditions or more options using this elif, which is a short notation for else if. And we can have more conditions, condition two, condition three. It's more easy to explain with an example. Let's have a look at the following code, coding cell. In the first statement, yeah, we take an input, we ask for the temperature, we convert this input to an integer and uh, assign it to the variable temperature. And then in these if statements, we check if this temperature, if this input we have given, is higher than 30 degrees, and we answer with print hot. If it is not higher than 30 degrees, but higher than 20 degrees, the answer will be warm. And uh, if it is not even higher than 20 degrees, we say it's cold. Let's run the program. Okay, and in 35 degrees, it's hot. Let's rerun the program, say it's 22 degrees, it's warm. Yeah, and one third time, we say it's only 12 degrees, yeah, it's cold. So actually what happens here? Yeah, the program goes through these if statements and it checks if this first condition is true. If it is, yeah, then it uh, runs the indented statements and goes um, to, 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 um, to the end of the if statements. If the first condition is not true, the second condition will be checked. If this is true, then the indented statements are um, executed and so on and so on. If none of these conditions given above is true, then we go through the else statements and run the indented um, statements in here. It's very important to see that the sequence of conditions is of importance. So we have slightly the same program in here, but the only difference is we have now swapped the 20 and the 30. So we first check if a temperature is higher than 20 degrees and then check if the temperature is higher than 30 degrees. Let's start with an example. Now we enter 35 degrees. Of course, we would expect it's hot. However, the, temp, um, the code says only it's warm. Why that? Yeah, so we first go in this first condition, we check 
if 35 is higher than 20, yes it is, and the result will be warm. We will not check then if it is really hot, because already the first condition has been true. In fact, this, in this program, the second condition will hardly ever be checked. Uh, so, uh, because, or reached, uh, will never be true, because if a temperature is higher than 30 degrees, then it is definitely higher than 20 degrees, so the first condition would have been true already. So this is a situation where you have several conditions and when you use this ELIF on top of this IF and ELSE. However, the other situation is discussed is nesting, which means we do have one IF statement and if this is true, we have another if statement. We have to check another condition. Again, let's work with the weather. You know, we have a first input, um, which is asking for the temperature. And then we have two variables, rain and wind, which could be either true or false. We have set them as condition constants in this program. Then we first check the temperature. We say it's warm and within this indented part, so if it's warm, then we check if it is raining, if the variable rain is true. Yeah, and we, in the first case, say it's warm, raining and summer in, in, in Aachen. And then we check even um, nested more with, this, with the third if, this, um, if the wind is true or false. So, simply let's run the program. So, I'll enter um, 25 degrees. So, what we get is, it's warm, uh, because temperature is higher than 20. If rain, uh, rain is true, yeah, so this condition is true as well, warm and raining summer in Aachen. Um, and the wind is not true. Yeah, say wind is false, so we run into this one. Warm, raining, no wind at all. Yeah. Of course, these other um, possibilities could be reached as well in here, depending on the values we hand in for rain, wind and the temperature. So what you can directly see in this example is that the pre program gets more complex. So. Uh, the higher the number of nesting is, the harder it is to read and to understand the program, to find faults, to identify situations. So it's always the question, can I compose a program in a different way that I do not have that much nesting? No, but in principle, you can do however, how many levels of nesting as you like. Let's do some uh, live exercise in here. So I'm going through the program, so this, um, so this uh, exercise first, and then you can stop um, this video, try to implement it by yourself, and then um, continue watching the video and see what our solution is in here. So what's this exercise all about? You should write a program that simulates the input of an ATM. So you would like to simply get money. For this, the following steps need to be carried out. First, ask for the PIN. Compare the input with a constant you have chosen. Yeah, so your secret PIN um, somewhere in the bank. And uh, the following steps will be executed only if the correct PIN is entered. Ask how much money should be withdrawn. Compare the amount with a fixed account balance. So if you would like to get $100 and you do not have your balance anymore, then you see um, you, you get either um, an error message or you get the um, print out money is issued. So we can, of course, not hand out money in here. So stop the video and try uh, implementing it by yourself. So I will now do this exercise in here. So first we need a secret pin. Yeah. Just say it's one, two, three, four. 
Then we have to ask for a pin. Yeah, we can do it. Um, that's a pin somebody types in. We get an input. Yeah. Please enter your pin. And you see it's converted to an integer so that I afterwards can compare it to my secret pin, which is an integer as well. Now let's try to um, solve this first if statement. Yeah? If pin equal with two equal signs to a secret pin, then let's first simply print out OK. Else we say, um, if the pin is entered incorrectly, issue an error message, um, print error. This pin is not valid. Yeah? So my recommenda recommendation would be, do not try to complete the program from scratch. Do it step by step and in between check if everything is fine and running. Okay, please enter your pin. First, I give the wrong one a one. However, the pin is not valid. I rerun the program. Yeah, I say one, two, three, four. And here it states it's correct. So the first part is solved. Now let's look for the inner part. Yeah, this one I have to change. This was a dummy only. So I first have to say how much uh, money is on the account actually. So uh, Let's define account balance equal to 1000 euros. And again, we ask for how much money is wanted. So we say um, money equals to int input. How much money do you want? And then we'll have to compare if the amount wanted is higher um, than the account balance. And depending on the result, we have to give a feedback, either not enough money or uh, money is issued. So let's check it again with an if statement. If money um, bigger than the account balance, Then we say, so somebody wants more, okay, um, not enough money on your account. And in the else case, so enough money is available, we say print um, money is issued. So what you can see, or first try if it works. Okay, I give the right pin, one, two, three, four. I'll ask for only 500 euro. So money is issued. Again, I check, one, two, three, four. Now, how much money do you want? 2,000, not enough money on your account. So it seems to work. We can check special cases, for example, uh, sorry, uh, one, two, three, four. What happens if I request exactly a thousand euro? So what should actually happen? Um, only if money is bigger than the account balance, um, then we run into this um, else case. So here money is issued. And again, I could check if the checking of the pin is okay and this pin is still not valid. So. What you can see here is my recommendation. Do not try to implement the whole program in once. Do it in steps. Check in between if everything is working fine. If not, first try to solve these problems. What can you learn from this unit? You have seen that in real world, um, the conditions are often more complex that a simple if else doesn't fit. So here's two ways to uh, handle these kind of situations. First, with the elif, 
if, elif, else, you can handle more options rather than two. And then you can nest conditions. That means you have one if and another if inside the first if. However, this starts to become complex and you should be careful if there is maybe a more easier way to implement the whole program project. Thanks lots for watching unit 6.